Hey, look at you, you've picked up the Hunter Call of the Wild for the first time, or maybe you're starting a new character. An exciting time for now, and ahead of you, a fantastic hike to the top level of 60, where you will have a multitude of weapons, equipment, reserves, and animal species. As with all my guides, I'm going to leave a timetable in the description so that you can jump around to any specific parts you are questioning, but if you ever have any questions, feel free to comment down below or join one of the many Call of the Wild community pages links in the description but without further ado starting at level one the guide All right, you've landed in Leighton or Hirschfelden for the first time. Before you go running around and firing away, there should be a deer in front of you, which you should shoot first. Aim for the lungs on this mad lad. We don't want him running away like crazy. We can move on to important things afterwards. Before we get too far ahead, you should know that this game has a lot of depth, and to enjoy it to its full potential, you must know a few things. We'll start simple with lookout points and cabins, then move into essential concepts such as scent and visual cues given to you by your heads up display, skills and perks, need zones and hunting pressure, animal classes, as well as tracking and scoring, and by then you may be wondering what the point of the game is, followed by a few personal tips from me. I will go through these as quickly and thoroughly as possible, but they are vital to playing the game to its full potential. Right above you from where you start out, you should see a lookout point. Similar to Assassin's Creed or Far Cry games, lookout points unveil the surrounding area and allow you to see points of interest as well as cabins. If you open up your map, you should be able to see that there are a multitude of lookout points on this literal 14 square kilometer reserve. Each one, and there are exceptions, should have a cabin somewhere nearby. As you gather your lookout points, you should see cabins revealed for you. If you ever want to go to either one of these cabins, feel free to click down on a certain location and place a waypoint which can show your character where to head. As you can imagine, cabins are your home bases throughout the reserve and they serve a vital purpose. For one, cabins allow you to change the time of day by using the bed. This comes in handy when you're using need zones, which we will talk about later on. Cabins also allow you to change your equipment using lockers. Make sure when you use a locker you buy weapons from the store, put them in your backpack, and then access your inventory to equip them to your person. But perhaps most important of all, cabins are fast travel points. Each reserve in the game is very large and if you want to be able to move around to your favorite spots quickly, unlocking the cabins is a great free way to do so. Alright, let's get moving again. While we're moving to our first lookout tower, take a look at the bottom right corner. Here you will see your ammo in the weapon, your ammo on your person, your compass, and your wind direction, your heart rate, as well as the visual cue and audible cue. As you can see here, my wind is coming from the northeast, which means the scent of my person is heading in this direction. When we find an animal, it will be important that it isn't in this direction of the wider end of the funnel, as we see this doe here. Otherwise, these buggers will hightail it and run before we even have a chance. Now, as we start moving, you should notice that we are, for one, making sound. This changes depending upon what foliage we're crawling through, what skills we have, as well as if we're running, crouching, or crawling prone. As you can see, the closer we get to the ground, the less sound we're going to make, but also the slower we're going to move. So as you get close to a monster buck, make sure you're making as little sound as possible, as well as taking your time so that you don't scare them off. Right next to the audible cue is the visual cue. This allows you to see how visible you are to the animals. Camo doesn't play any effect in the Hunter Call of the Wild. Instead, it's all based on how fast you're moving, as well as what stance you are in and where you are. A full circle means that you might as well be wearing a pink bunny costume because you aren't even making an effort. When you're traveling around though, it's perfectly fine to see that full circle. Just know that when you see an animal, changes will need to be made. An IQ should tell you that you are visible if you come into view, but they won't notice you as fast as a full circle. Next is the line with the half circle. You are now basically in crouching tiger mode. Sneaking up on your prey, they can still notice you, but if you pair this cue with the next two, you should be in the gold. 
the white line. This means that you are essentially staying still. Animals probably won't notice you, but their little deer senses might still think something is wrong with their surroundings. For complete concealment, you should hide in a bush or shrub till you see the small faded line. This is as hidden as you can be. Additionally, next to your visual cue, you will see your heart rate, which is just basically how fast your character is breathing. This will affect your shots as you slow down and try to take a shot on an animal coming by. So you should always take that into consideration because you will need to slow down and catch your breath before trying to hold your breath on a potential trophy. All right, skills and perks. Just like any great RPG, the Hunter Call of the Wild features skills and perks which will allow you to improve your character according to how you like to play the game. I'm not going to go into great detail about the skills and perks individually as I have another video showing my usual choices, so if you want to know more than my quick recommendation right now, check out that video after this one. First off, the difference between skills and perks. Skills affect your overall stalking, ambushing, hiding, spotting, and call. Calling. While your personal ability to use your weapons will improve over time, these skills make it easier to do everything else. Perks, on the other hand, are specifically for your weapons. There are perks for rifles, handguns, shotguns, and archery, so feel free to put points into anything you enjoy using. My recommendation on perks is to look for skills that improve all of your weapons, despite being in a single perk tree. Those will help you get the most bang for your buck when it comes to using your perk points. If we're talking about my recommendation on skills, I usually focus on the stalker skill tree, putting points into locate tracks, track knowledge, soft feet, improvise blind, and disturb vegetation. On top of that, moving to the ambusher skill tree, two of the most important skills you can get on this tree are spotting knowledge and sight spotting. The rest is up to you. Additionally, if at any point you feel you want to try a different set of skills and perks, you can always reset them by spending a little in-game coinage. Finally, let's talk about need zones. Super important in the game, this allows you to understand the movement of the animals throughout the day. When we think about animals in real life, they have a daily routine. They eat, they drink, they sleep, eat, drink, sleep, so on and so forth. It is no different when it comes to the Hunter Call of the Wild. When you're walking around, you may find need zones for various animals, which will be documented on your map for future reference. When you enter into the game, you should be able to look at the time of day and know which animals are doing what at that time. This will allow you to plan your hunt accordingly, knowing that at 12 p.m. whitetail are drinking, for example, so you should head to the edges of lakes and rivers. You can head on over to the BZ Hub Discord where we have a diamond animal chart which also includes need zone times for a variety of animals. As far as hunting pressure is concerned and how it relates to need zones, every time you shoot an animal you will find a magenta splotch added to your map where the death of the animal took place. As you kill more animals in this location, the color of the splotch will get brighter and brighter until it reaches its brightest point. When this happens, all need zones within the area will be deleted. They will be replaced later on with a new need zone and new herd in the area, but the only way to remove that hunting pressure before the need zones disappear is to hunt elsewhere on the map. There can only be a certain amount of pressure on the map at any given time, so hunting in various locations on the reserve will remove hunting pressure from other locations you previously hunted. You can also shoot animals and cause less hunting pressure by using a tree stand or tripod via DLC. Currently, the one exception to hunting pressure is geese in Hirschfelden, which will fly into your blind no matter how bright your map is. All right, let's start looking for animals. In your inventory, you should see that you have equipped the 243 bolt action rifle, the Caversham over and under shotgun, as well as the 357 Focuso revolver. If you go to the ammo of these weapons, you should see animal icons nearby. These are your animal classes available to use with this weapon. The Hunter Call of the Wild team has posted tables of ammo and their viable animal classes on their Facebook page and elsewhere, which you could use as a visual aid, but you can also look at your codex to check what animal class each animal on every reserve is. It's pretty straightforward once you relate the size of the animal to what other animals in its class are, similar to being somewhat limited to a size of fish by the test weight of your fishing line, only certain animals can be shot with certain weapons to achieve full integrity. So by looking at our weapons ammo for the 243, we can see that we can shoot animal classes 2 through 
6 with the 243 bolt action rifle, classes 2 through 5 with the Caversham's 12 gauge buckshot shells, as well as classes 2 through 6 with the 357 Focuso. Unfortunately, this means we won't be able to hunt bears, elk, and moose on Leyden, as well as European bison on Hirschvelden with full integrity at this point, but there's still plenty to hunt, so let's find an animal within these classes so that we can take a closer look at the scoring. Hey, take a look at this. We found some white-tailed deer tracks, but how long ago was this animal here? Let's try to find some scat. Yup, looking at this scat here, we can see that it's fresh, so that must mean the animal must be nearby. Let's go try to find it. And there they are. Let's get a good shot on them by aiming for the vitals so that we don't damage the trophy antlers and ruin our mount. Alright, got a decent shot on that one and now we can go to the scene of the crime to check the damage. As we unlock more powerful weapons, not only can we hunt larger animals, but larger calibers will deal more damage to the smaller animals within their viable classes. This 243 is on the lower end, but it still did enough damage to bring it down. We should also remember that the majority of rifle cartridges come in round nose or soft point tip bullets as well as polymer tip bullets. Round nose or soft point bullets will do exceptional damage to the vitals but lack penetration. On the other side, polymer tip bullets will drive through flesh and bone to get to the vitals but might not do too much damage when they get there. It's always been my recommendation to go with polymer tips but give them both a try and see what you think. Now, let's follow the blood trail to find our animal. There they are. Look at this big old boy here. Goodness gracious. Very nice looking buck there. Let's harvest the animals so that we can take a better look at the score. You can see here that the overall trophy rating is 265.9, which is pretty close to the diamond score. This is determined by the weight of the animal as well as their trophy organ, whether it be a skull, horns, or antlers, depending upon the animal. Some animals, and by the time you're watching this, all of the animals, have a true score, which is a breakdown of the trophy organ dimensions so that you better understand how the dimensions translate to your score you achieved. We can see looking at the antlers here that the dimensions will add up to our score for the animal. On the right side of the scoring screen, we can see what weapon we used, our ammo, and distance. We can also see where our shots hit the animal and how much damage they dealt. Below, we have options to taxidermize the animal and place it in our trophy lodge or cash in our animal and continue hunting. Looking back to the score on the left side of the score page, we can see that we have received a medal for our harvest and that there are checked boxes here. These represent the checks necessary to receive the best medal possible for your animal. In the Hunter Call of the Wild, animal size is loosely represented by levels. Some animal species go to level 3, some animals go to level 5, and others max out at level 9 legendary, representing the most difficult animals you can hunt. At the same time, every animal species in the game has an opportunity to award you a bronze medal, a silver medal, a gold medal, or the coveted diamond medal. The purpose of the medals goes beyond the score of the animal, although you can find great looking animals of all metal types worthy of mounting in your lodge, the diamond animal represents the largest of each species in the game as well as expert skill while hunting. Not only do you need to be able to find the trophy giant, but you must also demonstrate your knowledge of appropriate weaponry, stalking, and marksmanship to achieve the diamond bragging rights. I should add that at the time I was editing this video, there were not any great ones added into the game, but there are great ones added now. Expansive Worlds added the level 10 fabled great ones. Currently, there's only Whitetail, but by the time you're watching this, maybe more, um, which are supposed to be kind of a 
campfire-ish story of a you know a magnificent beast hidden out in the forest and this is just another animal that is going to be very difficult to find and will be considered in higher regard than your average diamond. We can tell by looking at this that we got a gold medal not the coveted diamond medal but it's still a nice looking buck so I think we will taxidermize this and mount it in our lodge somewhere. By accepting now we will get money and experience for our harvest and we can continue hunting hunting. Over time, we'll slowly be able to improve our character and purchase more equipment to use during our future hunts. Alright, you understand the basics of the game now, but how do you level up? What should you do? Well, depending upon your starting map, you will be given directions for a mission given by the Reserve Game Warden. You can go into your missions tab at any point to take a look at your available missions and see what they require. Missions give you experience to level up your character and gain more skill and perk points. They also give you a chance to understand the game a bit better, see various points of interest, as well as a chance to hunt some abnormal animals. On top of that, every reserve has its own very special story for the missions, whether it be discussing forest fires in Yukon, studying diseased animals on Medved, or reacting as the game warden to rhino poaching and spirit animals on Verhonga. The missions offer you a chance to experience a bit of life for that game warden at that reserve. If at any time you want to switch reserves, you can open up your map and look at the bottom of the screen for the option to switch reserves. For now though, I would focus on completing missions and hunting pretty much any animal you see. It can be tempting to only hunt the largest animals at first, but at this level you need to focus on gaining money and experience because the more experience and the more money you receive, the more skills, perks, weaponry and equipment you unlock, purchase and use in your hunts, unlocking the ability to hunt larger animals successfully and efficiently. Once you feel up for it, the ultimate goal is to hunt for diamond animals. Make a goal to find a diamond animal of every species, and if you happen to achieve that, start looking for rares of each species. There are plenty of rare and high scoring animals to find in this game, and sometimes combinations of both. All are worthy of bragging rights. Find those animals, post them on the community pages, and receive the praise that you are due. We're coming down to the end of it, but before I wrap this all up, let me share some of my tips with you to hopefully improve your future hunts. You can hunt your way to all of the lookout towers and their cabins nearby, or you can drive around with an ATV to quickly gather up your fast travel points and hunt from there. Alternatively, you may be able to go into multiplayer games and unlock your cabin fast travel points by a tense of nice hunters also playing the game. Drinking need zones are a fantastic time to catch animals out in the open, and all you need to do is run around to various watering holes during each species drink time to find them. Goose hunting on Hirschfelden is super relaxing, and I recommend it over duck hunting. You can find my goose hunting guide if you click the notification above. When you're hunting around, keep a steady pace and try to spot animals 150 yards out or more. This will give you time to slow down your gameplay and start stalking the animal before they notice you. Investing time into this game is worth it. The company behind the Hunter Games prove time and time again that they are focused on continually improving their games and adding new content instead of making a new game year after year losing your progress. There is a great community surrounding this game so sit back and enjoy for the long haul. As always if anyone has a great tip they'd like to share with new players comment it down below. Alright, we've covered a lot in this guide. Hopefully you feel more confident in your ability to play this game to its full potential. We've talked about lookout points, cabins, heads up display, skills and perks, need zones and hunting pressure, animal classes and ammo, tracking and scoring, what to do, as well as a few of my personal tips to enjoy the game to its full potential. In just a few minutes, you've learned more than I learned in my first 100 hours playing. Sad, I know. But with some people reaching a reported 5,600 hours of gameplay in this game, my 700 hours falls a bit short, but I hope it's enough to get you started. Please like the video if you found it helpful. We have Twitch and YouTube streams periodically on Monday, Wednesday, sometimes Friday, 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. Central U.S. time, so I hope to see you there. Please once again, like and subscribe, and as always, keep gaming. Never stop.